All right, good evening, everyone. I think we've had a little bit of a lull in the attendee first wave, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, with a little bit of insider information to, to kick us off. Uh, my name is Jennifer McInnes. I'm the Vice President of Growth and Market Marketing at Sonoran Desert Institute. Thank you so much for being uh, here with us tonight. We've got a really great panel set up. Um, we'll get to that in just a second. I wanna lay a couple ground rules and see if we can get everybody on the same page. So um, for those of you who haven't interacted with us via one of these webinars before, a couple pro tips for you. Um, first and foremost, if you do have any questions that you'd like me to take a look at and then pose to our panel tonight, please be sure to do that in the Q&A section of your webinar dashboard. Um, there are two ways to interact tonight. One is via the chat. I would reserve that just uh, if you would for kind of interactions between the attendees and anything that you'd like me to lay eyes on, like I said, to share it with the panel, go ahead and uh, earmark that for the Q&A section. That'll help me keep everything organized. I'll be uh, monitoring both of them, but um, would love to get your feedback and any questions you have for the panel, just put it in Q&A for me. Um, in the meantime, for those of you who are here with us tonight, I'd love to hear one of my little nerd alert things is I love to know where people are coming from. So do me a favor and in that chat function, if you wouldn't mind, um, give me a little hello, tell me where you're coming from city and state and whether you are a student, graduate or nothing at all as far as SDI goes. We always have a really good mix of people who are current students, graduates, and who have just heard about SDI from other you know, sources and are just checking out the webinar as good information, which we're totally fine with. So um, pop on over there, let us know where you're coming from, city and state, and if you are a student or graduate or nothing at all. Um, okay, great. So those are my main, oh, one more thing. We are recording this session tonight, as always. I'm gonna post it on the SDI YouTube channel over the course of the next couple days here, and then we will share that link out via social media. So keep an eye out for that if you want the recording. Okay. Without further ado, um, I'm going to go around and introduce some of my panelists for this evening, starting with a couple SDI team members. So um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I will introduce who you are and what you do, and then I'm going to pitch it to each one of you guys so that you can each kind of talk about what your life looks like, what your company is like, what you do, and then we'll kind of launch from there into the topic for this evening. So I'll start with Kip Carpenter. Kip Carpenter is the Master Gunsmith at Sonoran Desert Institute. We also have Elaine Schultz, who is our Director of Career Services. Um, I've got Wyatt Hale, who is uh, unique in that he is an SDI graduate, what is up, and he's also the assembly manager at CZ. Um, Shailene Kiner is here with us, uh, founder of Headhunters NW, can't wait for her to tell you a little bit about that company. And then we've got Lior Ingelstein with us as well, um, who is the owner of Full Conceal Manufacturing. Thank you panelists so much for being here with us tonight. We really, really appreciate it. Kip, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do, um, your background, and anything that pertains to tonight's topic that you wanna leave in there, go for it. Sure, I want to say hello to everybody and welcome to the webinar tonight. And I hope we get every question that you wanna answer. And I also wanna give a shout out to one of our former students, Wyatt, on his position at CZ. We're really proud of him. He, he really uh, kicked some butt and got out there and did it. And he's a fine example of what you can do if you apply yourself. So my hat's off to you, Wyatt. Great, thanks, Kip. Um, yeah, go ahead, any any other details on that? Sure. Uh, my background a little bit started a long time ago, about when I was 15 years old. I got a big interest in guns, like a lot of young men do. I wanted to hunt and I wanted to shoot. My dad was a shooter, wasn't so much a hunter. My best friend's dad was a hunter kind of worked out best of both worlds. He was also a gunsmith by trade. He worked for a place called American Wholesale Supplier, much like a huge buds kind of situation, but they also did gunsmithing and more. He taught me and his son all kinds of things. And one way he would teach us is teach us without knowing. He would come home with a box full of parts and a manual and say, good luck. You can put together and we'll go this weekend. So, and this would usually be on a Wednesday, by the way. So we would, get the reading and we would get to things. And that brings up my point about online education. Hands-on is great and you can do your own hands-on. Well, I will tell you that, but you gotta have the knowledge up here first to know what you're gonna do with those hands. So that is what really started me on my quest in gunsmithing. There wasn't a lot of schools back then. There wasn't a lot of anything <laughs> from this back then. And I read every kind of book I could get my hands on. And I've done this my whole life. 
And I, I went to uh, a couple of schools and stuff later in life because I felt like I needed to do something to stay current. So I took three of them at once. And in about 2015, my shops up here in Tennessee had grown to where I was one of the biggest, if not the biggest in Tennessee. That all happened because of a dedication to learn and a motivation to learn. I did not have it easy in schools and stuff. So those of you out there say, well, I never did good in school. Hey, neither did I. And I even eventually went beyond and actually went to college and got some tutors and did my own thing. So don't ever let nobody hold you back and know that you can do anything you set your mind to. I'm living proof of that. And I apply those principles every day to my life. And a little bit of what I do with SDI, I was approached in 2015, or 2015, I'm sorry, with this very nice lady down here on the end, my name was Jennifer. <laughs> and we all kind of came in at the same time. We were a small group and we all had this vision and everybody brought with them a piece of that vision. And that vision grew and grew and grew to what we are now, which is getting to be a very big company. Mm -hmm. And we grow every day and we have great industry relationships with, with people like you see on this panel and beyond. And we just, strive to do this every day and that's pretty much my background I shut down my big shop to strictly go to teaching with SDI full-time when it was offered to me and Jennifer will tell you I've been I'm a man with many hats I'm part of the curriculum team I do a part of the leadership team I'm part of I do a little bit of everything basically that's right, <laughs> you do. and, and uh, you know and I love every minute of it I love every minute of it and when I get to meet somebody that has gone on and does it. You don't know how well it's, it, it means more to me than myself. To know that you guys out there can get out there and you're keeping this art alive. And we're striving to get better and better and better every day in our curriculum department. We're looking at things to change everything. Sometimes we keep change and now we're looking next year to go even bigger on some things. And the whole point is to give you all of the industry secrets that we can to give you the backgrounds that we can, to give you all the experience we can, and get all those little tips and things that old gunsmiths like me kind of keep aside. Right, Wyatt? A lot of those guys will hide a few things. They won't tell you quite everything because they don't want the competition. We're going to teach it. So we just, if I, if I seem really encompassed by it, it's because I am. And I think everybody that works with us are, and we are all striving to get better and better every day and to make our industry better and better every day. Because let's face it, folks, our industry is under attack heavily, and we've got so many firearms out there and so little gunsmiths and good gunsmiths, and the good ones get yanked up at companies like CZ and other places. So your, your niche is there, but you've got to really take that upper slot and commit yourself and go for it and really hold that higher standard. Be that ethical gunsmith. Be that one that goes the extra miles. Says, I don't need to learn this, but I'm going to learn it anyway because I might have a customer. You do that, you'd be on top of your game, I guarantee you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kip. Um, I'm going to take it to Elaine, if you don't mind. Um, you want to kind of give us a little bit of your background, what you do for SDI? Sure. I'm um, Elaine Schultz. I'm just the Director of Career Services over at SDI. Um, what we do here in the department is get you ready to be that professional gunsmith out in the real world. Um, you know, with your resume writing, your interviewing skills. Um, you know, how do we look for a job? How do we get in contact with um, the wonderful people we have on the webinar today? And not only that, you know, career services sometimes on the list is always at the end, which is totally not true. Career <laughs> services is here till the, from the very beginning. If you need something from the department, you just email us um, and we can definitely get you going. Um, what you need to do is kind of like what Kip was saying is be that professional gunsmith in training now. Um, so that your mindset is ready to go once you're done with school. Um, and you will be great, and um, you will definitely get that, that career that you want. Absolutely. Very cool. Thank you, Elaine. No um, Lior, I'm going to pitch it to you next, if you don't mind. You're just next on my list, on my screen. So do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Full Conceal, kind of where that happened and how and what you guys are currently doing? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we're uh, relatively new in, in this industry. Uh, the idea formed for Full Conceal by a, a gentleman named Mike Full uh, after the Aurora, Colorado movie theater shooting. Uh, he realized that um, most of the gun companies today want people to carry, which is a good thing. 
but they're pitching subcompacts, which if you go to the scenario where you need to pull out your gun, you're, you're going to need more than seven rounds. Um, especially considering a myriad of things like cops on average are usually nine minutes away. Uh, at the best, your accuracy is about 30%, which people don't want to talk about. Um, so we, we set out to figure out how to get more ammo in a smaller package. Uh, so what we came up with has, has really upset the industry, uh, but a lot of people that have taken it on really loved it. And uh, this is actually it right here. So we've, we, we need gunsmiths to make this work. <laughs> so, um, it might not look like it, but there's actually 22 rounds of nine that's accessible right here. And it's, it's the size of, of my cell phone. Uh, it goes right in the pocket, trigger disconnects, opens right up, and, and can fire. So that's what we do. And we've done it to other guns. Um, we have it on the 19 Glock. We have it on the 43. And now we're moving on to Springfield. We've done our own as well uh, in-house. And we are just trying to think outside the box and, and really push the industry into somewhere where people haven't really thought of where it could be and, and really try to get that in, in there. Now, how I started is a, is a bit of a funny story. Um, I was on my way into law school um, and I saw a job posting that said, new gun company looking for sales reps. <laughs> and I said, law school will always be there. Let's try this out. And uh, the main thing that I want everyone to take away, all the students, is, is whenever you work at a company, treat it like you own it, because one day you might. And, and that happened. Um, the, the owners of the company, Mike and Steve, came up to me and said, we can't run the manufacturing portion of it. There's just too much going on with sales and marketing. So I bought that from them. And now I own the manufacturing portion of the company. And, and that's what I run. And that's what, that's what I, I do. And, and I'm always in the market for gunsmiths and machinists and, and just gun people in general. Awesome. Lior, I've got a couple of questions for you after we do intros. So a couple of things. You, you made the chat light up a little bit. So we'll come back to those. Um, Shailene, I'm going to go to you next. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your company and, and how you got to be where you are? Sure. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being on this call. I'm really excited to be here. And I hope that we can become a valuable resource for everyone here. Um, we... Founded, I founded the company in 2004, and um, we specialize in the outdoor industry uh, broadly, but about 95% of our work is in the firearms industry. So the manufacturers, the distributors, the nonprofit companies, all of those that encompass our industry, whether it be firearms or accessories or ammunition, those are our customers. So they hire us to find you. They hire us to find talent. So they might need um, someone in a special skill set. Perhaps an optical company, an optics company might need an electrical engineer, or uh, maybe the uh, ammunition company needs a ballistics engineer, or perhaps a strategic operations manager. It could be anything. Um, they come to us and we go out and we find those people. So we do a lot of relocations. Um, our customers are global, so they're not, they're not always just the U.S.-based companies. They, they certainly have work here in the United States. Um, and I am at the trade shows that probably most would recognize, SHOT Show, um, NRA, uh, NASGW, which is coming up, which is a distributor show. So uh, that I can meet uh, the people in person and, and be there. And it's just a great industry. I mean, what can I say? I mean, none of us knew each other before this call, but we're <laughs> automatically connected because we all love firearms, right? I mean, so I'm a user. I love the products and I, you know, do partake in those occasional discounts that we can get. I love any part of the firearms industry. <laughs> So I have, you know, plenty, too many guns for the gun safes I have, probably like everyone else on this call. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, it's great. I mean, I love the people. I mean, we're all connected in immediately because we love what we are passionate about. 
Absolutely. So other than that, it doesn't really feel like work. It just feels like talking with our friends and introducing people at the right time for the right job. Awesome. I love that. And, and that's so true. I love the networking component to not only this industry, but even just even the webinar tonight. Um, Shailene, that, that's Shailene, that's how you and I know each other. I reached out to a friend of mine at Crossbreed Holsters and said, do you happen to know anybody who would be able to, you know, talk through some ins and outs of the hiring process? And he was like, oh, yes, <laughs> I've got someone for you. So, um, so thanks that's again exciting. for being here. I think that's exciting stuff. That's a good one. Um, Wyatt, bringing up the rear, <laughs> could you talk through um, what you currently do with CZ, kind of how you got into that, all that good stuff? Hi, everybody. Um, I started at CZ as an assembler and then uh, kind of made my way up from there. I went to supervisor and then now I've made it up to manager. Uh, I've got a real good team of people that work with me there. Um, I do mostly personnel management. I do inventory control management, uh, scheduling. Scheduling is probably a big, big part of my day. Um, process development, stuff like that. We do a lot of product development within there as well. We work closely with the R&D department and purchasing and quality control and developing different processes to get product through. Um, so it's, it's been great. It's been a great ride uh, getting to where I'm at and looking forward to where I'm going. Awesome. Very, very cool. So let's dive in a little bit. Um, those of you who, I, I saw a couple people in here who are not SDI students and grads, and that's pretty normal for us. It's usually about 60, 40. Um, those of you who are not, just so you know, Sonoran Desert Institute is an online firearm specific college. Um, we, everything you do is online. We ship all of your tools and resources because we do believe in a huge hands-on component. Um, all of that comes to you. So if you have any questions about what we do or offer or how we do it, um, please let us know, uh, sdi.edu, or you can email our admissions team at admissions at sdi.edu, but I won't spend too, too much time talking about that. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, we talked a little bit, even in, in just the intros, about um, what, like the types of jobs that your companies would be hiring in, uh, but Shailene, we'll come back to you for a little bit on that. What I'd like to go first for is we're going to start easy. When you guys are hiring, um, and, and everybody's kind of coming from a di different direction here, when you guys are looking for someone to hire, we're going to start with soft skills, and then we'll build into the actual technical, you know, trade skills as well. So um, I think those are kind of uh, super important on both ends. So let's start with soft skills. Um, when you are looking to fill a position, can, can you guys give me an example of the types of soft skills that you're looking for? Leor, you were shaking your head, so I'll go to you first. Yeah, soft skills for me personally are, are probably more important than the hard skills. Um, hard skills, you could learn them on the job, you could learn them by taking class. Um, soft skills, if you don't have them, then I can't teach them to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reason why that's my mindset is, uh, to be quite frank, I spend more waking hours at work than I do with my family. So if I'm hiring someone, I want to enjoy their company. Yep. Uh, so, so if someone is coming in with the, with a bad attitude every day and has just no real will to learn on the job, no real will to play nice with others, mm -hmm. um, then it's not going to be a good fit. Definitely. Uh, and, and we could go through teaching what we need on the job, which we're going to do anyway later. Yep. So that's why, for me personally, soft skills is, is what I look at. How can you hold a conversation? How you could work with others? And that those are very important to me. Absolutely. And I'm going to take one step back. And Elaine, I'll tee you up for this one. We had one person say, ooh, help me out, soft skills versus hard skills. <laughs> so if we could kind of work on definitions there and frame some context, that's, that's my fault. I probably should have started with those definitions. But Elaine, do you want to kind of talk us through um, the difference between soft skills and hard skills, that kind of thing? Yeah, soft skills is typically your communication, your, pro your professionalism, um, you know, your attitude. You know, those are the things that are, is something that you kind of grow along of, you know, when you're having other jobs or when you're, when you're in school. Um, the hard skills are more of like your technical skills. Like how is it that you're doing the, the manufacturing part of it? How are you understanding how to explain 
um, certain parts of the firearms, right? So um, those are your soft skills versus your hard skills. It's the soft skills, like we were saying, is a lot more something that someone's looking for. And even on your resume, that's what you want to highlight as well, because they could always teach you everything else. You just have to know the basics. Mm -hmm. So personality is important, it sounds like. Shailene, I'm going to take it over to you for your take on that as well, um, especially since you're hiring for different types of positions. If there are any common threads there for people that, that you know, characteristics or soft skills that you find make uh, a successful job applicant, I think it would be great to hear those. Sure. Um, I think what we hear from most of the hiring managers that we work with are people who can solve problems and can communicate. So if someone comes to a hiring manager with a problem, they really need to come to the hiring manager with a solution. If they don't have the solution to be, you know, self-driven and self-motivated enough to look for that solution, not be standing there saying, hey, we have a problem and not be able to fix it. So it, it is really important that, you know, all of these companies that are manufacturing, they're in a very competitive environment and they're the prices of their product, the raw product, is very expensive and it's very hard to make a profit and their human cost is the most expensive piece. So if a person comes into a job, it doesn't matter if they're the person that's sweeping the floor or the person that's the CEO or in between. They're all the same people. They just have to be able to take pride in their job and be the expert in what they're hired for and be conscientious about what they're doing. And if they come, like Lior said, with a good attitude, people hire people they like. Um, and they hire people that they can count on and that are dependable. Those are really important things. And he is completely right. I couldn't have agreed with him more. You can teach the technical part, the hard skills we're calling it, but the soft skills, interacting with people and getting along and being willing to take constructive criticism, those are the people that we see that are hireable time and time again, and that their career grows because these employers, they're very, you know, everyone's very busy and everyone is. You're, you're living with the people you're working with more than the people you live with. So Absolutely. It's, the attitude is everything. <clears throat> Definitely agree with that. Let me pivot a little bit and kind of color that in then with those hard skills, the technical stuff, the experience, all of that good stuff. And for that, Wyatt, I'll go to you first, if you don't mind. What are the types of things that you look for in a prospective employee as it comes to skills and experience and, you know, all of that good stuff? I would say the, not to go backwards, but the soft skills are probably the most important thing for me. Um, awesome. You know, I probably only got three or four technical questions. Uh, that I talk about in my interview before we ever get to a practical and almost everything else is soft skills and mm -hmm. you know, problem solving and trying to figure that out. And then we get into the technical stuff. Uh, you know, it's more of the icing on the cake versus the meat, meat of it, you know? Sure. Uh, so when I get into the hard skills, I'm looking, if, if, if someone, you know, interview, but the not set them up uh, of everybody else as far as soft skills goes, and then start saying, you know, keywords that apply to our industry, like warehouse management systems or, you know, Kanban or something like that. You know, that gives me the idea that they have an understanding of those things. And now they become more of an asset, uh, even if they don't have the social skills or whatever else may have sure. set them below. Now, is your process, White, is your, when you walk through a hiring process, is that a multi-tiered approach? Do you look through, what's that process look like for you? You garner a bunch of resumes. How do you sort through them? Yeah, we just, uh, so, you know, all the way up until about three months ago, I used to sort through every single resume myself, uh, and then I would call everybody myself, email everybody myself. Now we've we've moved into a hiring process. We have an HR that uh, does the initial steps, and I told them, you know, my criteria of what I'm looking for in a person, and they filter, you know, a group of resumes to me, and I'll filter through those and decide who I want to interview. Uh, and then when, it get, when they do finally come in, I've kind of got like a structured interview that I do. 
know, we go through that interview and then after that I sit and I try to usually have um, my lead sit in with me so that he can give me his opinion on it and then, you know, also develop his skills as well in the interview process. Awesome. Very, very cool. Okay. Um, Kip, I'm going to ping over to you on this as well. Um, so over this multi-decade career um, within the firearms industry and particularly in gunsmithing shops, uh, I know that there have been a couple instances where you've grown past just a one-man band. What do you look for in somebody that you would be hiring on in that type of capacity? Well, you know, the first thing that I look for is like everybody else, it's the soft skills all the way. I have a little theory on that. In my shops, we've always had heavy equipment, machinery, things of that nature. I'm not gonna let any new hire just run loose into a machine shop. So the first thing I'm looking for is a, um, the soft skills, and that theory is that the soft skills lead to safety, and safety leads to soft skills. Hmm. And what I mean by that is, if you don't have the right personality, if you don't have the willingness to learn, if you don't have the willingness to follow procedures, if you're coming in every day and throwing your screwdrivers across the room, or you're making the, somebody else uh, uncomfortable, or the like in my big shop, I had Robert with me, who was my lead machinist, if I say to Robert, are you going to blow off what he tells you and hurt him potentially or yourself? These are all the kinds of things that and it all starts with the soft skills. In our shops, they're a little different. We go to the advanced or the, the harder skills after that. that we got to make sure it's going to be a good fit. And in my shop, because I only had two at a time usually, I would take him back to the guys, let him spend some time with them, and see if they jump. That's important too. In a shop environment, everybody's got to kind of get along. And for the same reasons, because we're dealing with some very dangerous things here. We're not just talking about the equipment, but we're talking about power tools in general. We're talking about firearms that if, if you're negligent or not paying attention, you can get loaded and discharged in a shop. We're talking about a lot of these different things. You know, um, it's not uncommon for gunsmiths with big shops, and White probably knows about this too. We have a firing tube, a lot of us have, where we can actually test on the bench and shoot right into our tubes, you know, where we can do that in a shot. That area has to be secured. It has to be safe. You have to know what you're doing. So if I get that employee that comes in and has those skills and communication skills, which is a huge one, because you're dealing with customers. So I can't have somebody in the shop that's cussing and throwing things or can't even communicate with my customers. I need someone who can do that. Now, we can get around a lot of that in a lot of ways. But I need that willingness right off the bat. If I don't have that, it usually doesn't even get past that. But if you do have that, that's what I think a lot of employers are looking for. Um, I want somebody who's dedicated that really wants to learn before mm -hmm. we do all that. Because then the next thing that comes will be the harder skills. And the first thing I'm looking for is knowledge right here. What's, what's between your ears? You can tell me steps and procedures about things I might ask you, like, have you ever done a barrel job? Have you ever assisted with a barrel job? Mm -hmm. You know, what's involved with that? You can just take me those videos, and, you know, we kind of know, you know, you've got your feel to it. We can take it from there, and then, because you're going to be doing this anyway, you're either going to be standing next to me for a while, or you're going to be standing next to Robert for a while, and you're going to be doing the actual work. And sure. so we feel you're good enough to let you work on a customer's <laughs> thing, because liability is a huge thing, folks. Absolutely. Um, so we have to be careful like that. And we have to adhere to OSHA standards. We have to adhere to the EPA standards. We have to do, we have a lot of things that goes into the business and it's not hard if you follow the rules. Yep. Follow the rules, everybody's safe and everybody's great. And we usually have a lot of people that go a lot further that way. So definitely your soft skills is a must. If you have it cussing, Try to clean it up before you start going and talking to these people on this panel for a job. Maybe don't lead with that kind of thing on the interview then. As well, you know, let's face it, folks. The workplace has changed too over yeah. the years. Mm -hmm. Lots of things that used to be PC five years ago are no longer PC. You can get your butt fired real quick. Sure. And my son. So that's, that was, that was, I would just reiterate what they're saying, but that yeah. a blue collar shop like mine, we hold those standards too. Absolutely. And I've got a really applicable follow-up question from the Q&A section here. So um, Aaron has chimed in and he's got a specific background. And I think um, all of you listening from an attendee perspective um, 
put yourself in Aaron's shoes and just apply whatever your background is to what he's saying. So Aaron says, um, if someone like myself who's in the IT industry, I may not have firsthand experience, but I'm capable of learning the systems. What's an applicable way to approach those conversations without experience? So I think what we're asking here is how do we um, make the leap from maybe I don't have this experience right this very second, but I know I can learn it. I'm willing to do so. How, how do you position yourself in that conversation to really have that messaging happen to your future employer? Uh, I don't know who I want to have tackle that question. Um, anybody want to raise a hand on who wants to take that one? Go ahead. Yeah, I also do this one. <laughs> so I, I was in that position myself uh, mm -hmm. in changing a field. Um, it's very hard. It's an uphill battle. Uh, but ultimately what you need to do is you need to show that you have taken some sort of initiative to learn that field. Uh, you need to also show that you're receptive to learning. Um, how that's done. Uh, I mean, how I did it. Um, it, it comes to a point where you just can't give out resumes anymore. I, I just started knocking on the door. Mm -hmm and putting myself in the face of the hiring manager and, and really pretty much forcing them to sit down and talk with me. Um, so that's, if you show that initiative as a, as someone who hires, if someone shows me that initiative, they're, they're going to pretty much get a, an interview just because I like how, how ballsy they are. Sure. Um, and, and, that is something if you're changing career paths then you need to put yourself out there more than normal and also you need to understand that you're probably going to take a pay cut to get into a field that you want to get into i think that's a good expectation to set for sure and and that's super applicable to some of the rest of the things that we've seen come in the chat recently um along the same lines of like hey i've been doing this one thing how do i get into the firearms industry though how do i like break my way in shailene anything to add to that kind of thing that's a tough one. I think that's common. Um, that's a common request we get um, when I travel and people hear about what we do. They they want to be in our industry. We're very lucky, all of us, that we get to do what we love every day. I think if you're trying to break into the firearms industry, um, getting some formal training, like you know this this organization that you all represent that we're good enough to be on here. At uh, SDI, I think that's that's a primary thing to do because that'll give you the technical experience in that area. The other thing that you can do is go out of your way to learn about the industry, attend trade shows. For instance, the NRA trade show is open to the public. That's a consumer show, um, and there's also um, there's there's other consumer shows that you can attend, so you can get right in front of the manufacturers. If they have a booth, they're there. You can talk to someone. You can visit with the sales guys. They usually talk to anyone. LinkedIn is a really, really good tool. And anyone can join LinkedIn. And that way you can start connecting with people who are in the firearms industry in areas that you're interested in. And then you can also reach out to people that are local to your geographic area and offer to buy someone coffee and ask them about what they do. You know, people, I find people generally want to help other people. Most times we're all made that way. So I think as long as you don't take advantage of that and you ask someone's advice, they will often give you the time. If they see that you're genuine and you're investing and you're offering to help them if they need help. So mm -hmm. it can be done, but Lior's right. It's it's a battle. It's not that easy, but who cares? I mean, if you get to do what you love for a living, there is nothing better. So it's worth every minute. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think I can kind of piggyback on that too a little bit. Perfect. You know, especially with um, like Lior was saying with the whole resume. Sometimes you just have to get out there in, in front of somebody. You know, social media or technology nowadays too is a huge thing that you can um, put on your side. Um, you know, with Instagram or even with um, the features that we're doing with our students with their builds, that is your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Bring your portfolio in, you know, show that, um, you know, as, you know, working with career services as well, how can I show relevant information from the past to the present? You can definitely do that. It's just digging that information in. 
-hmm. but use all those other technologies to suit to your advantage because if you can't see somebody face to face at least you can show them hey here's my portfolio absolutely and i'm super interested yeah one. go ahead why yeah go for it why so i think the original question was on um someone was in the it industry and was asking about they don't have experience with wms but they have experience mm -hmm. with it I mean, you can relate anything you have in your IT, even if you don't know about WMS, you can say, look, I, I started with this program. I didn't know anything about it. I learned it. And within, you know, three months, I'm, you know, working on working in this program and correcting issues that directly relates to WMS, even if it's not, because it shows that you're going to quickly learn that system and be able to you know, work within it. Great point. Great point. It's just finding, finding things, the skills you already have and trying to relate them to what you want to show that you can do. And that can definitely be a challenge. Um, Elaine, I know that a lot of the work that you're going to be doing with students is going to pertain to those types of tip, tips and tricks. So if anybody is struggling with that concept, feel free. If you're a student graduate, email career services at sbi.edu. Elaine can point you in the right direction for some useful resources as well. So, Jennifer, um, I have one point ahead, I want to put on that. I used to get two or three per month come in, want a friendship, do something. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will tell you all, and Jennifer has heard me say this in many webinars with her, and I tell the students over and over and over, don't say you can do anything. You cannot be totally honest, especially if you come to my shop. That's what I want, because we can teach you anything you need to know. But if you tell me you know how to barrel, chamber a barrel, and I send you over to lathe, and you don't know how to chamber a barrel, set it up, not only are you going to make me a little mad, but you're going to have my you know, machinist at the time. He would have been very upset you're touching his tools sure. and everything else because you lied to us. You don't, you don't have. So you're going to go a lot further in this business with your customers, with, with your, your future employers. Be honest. And I also like the idea of going into a, a shop or anywhere. Uh, Shannon made a good point. Go to all your local shops and firearm shops and just talk to them. Get to know them. Like she said, buy them a cup of coffee. It's somewhere you really want me to take the guy to lunch. Tell him what your goals in life are and what you, and you'd like an opportunity to start. You have to volunteer a few hours. Hey, why not? But all these little things will get you in that door and get you to go further. But that honesty will pay off every time. It just, it just, it's very important in this industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And honest integrity is super important. Um, and that tenacity, I mean, is, that's kind of what I'm hearing emergent as far as a trend goes. You have to be a little tenacious when it comes to, you know, getting a job in whatever industry you want to be in, especially if you're breaking into one for the first time. So great points, guys. Um, I have a question for my attendees. If you could pop over to the chat, I'm just curious, um, how many of you currently, let's say, have a LinkedIn account and are using it? I'd be really interested to know. I'm sure Elaine, her, her little ears are probably perking up too. Um, would love to know if any of you are currently utilizing LinkedIn um, as a potential method of network because uh, it did sound like that could be a cool resource. I'm just, I have no idea how many people, in, um, you know, online here are currently doing that. So that's just my own little huh, uh, moment here. So, um, okay, cool. So I want to flip a little bit and say, and, we, and we've kind of almost like uh, answered this uh, on the other side of this question, but give me an example of something that would immediately discount a person from getting a position that you'd be hiring for. We've talked about like perfect case scenarios and what we're looking for. Give me an example outside of like, well, you walked in and lit the place on fire. You know what I mean? Give me an example of something you would see on a resume or during the interview process that would immediately discount someone from getting that position. Anybody have? Yeah. Um, so when I'm reviewing resumes, I mean, some people just don't put any any effort into that resume at all. I mean, it's yeah. it's the generic resume. It still says I've I've seen some that still says your name and their name is typed in the oh, center. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes two seconds to look at that. Sure. Um, so you know, if I'm looking at resumes and I see something that's not a generic resume or they've you know tailored it specifically to my position. They're probably going to go into the at least review review folder, so I can go over it and see if I want to call them in. Sure. Uh, I've had you know professional appearance before you even you know show up. Timeliness and professional appearance before we even have spoke. I've already you know, halfway made a decision. If you show up and you're dressed nice, you you care about the position. You show up 15 minutes early, you care about the position. If you show up with a pin 
you care about the position. If you don't show up with those things, you're going to have to interview very well to ever even make it out of that interview with me considering you. Um, there's tons of things. Uh, you know, I do a practical exam if someone completely botches that. Uh, and there's, I, I try to give them, you know, I try to see those soft skills on the training and I'll try to retrain them on how to do whatever the practical exam is. And if, if they show that they can take the training and then do better on the practical exam, then, then they're in the good. But if they can think to botch that, then you know, I don't really need you. Mm -hmm. I think Kip touched on it earlier, dishonesty. Um, I've, I've had people that interviewed very well and then they've made claims, you know, during that interview that had they not made those claims, they probably would have came out that interview a lot better. But when they made those claims and then I had, okay, follow-up question to see if you even have any information on what you're claiming you, you know, and then you stare at me like, oh, well, I don't really know that. Then, then you're worse off than if you didn't claim to do that because now I know that you're going to be dishonest. And if I, if I were to hire you and I asked you to do something and you're like, yeah, I can totally do that. And I'll walk away and come back and you destroyed $2,000 worth of stocks. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, uh, and, then, uh, and then on the uh, resume, one last thing, one thing on the resumes is yeah. I look through and if, if you've had, you know, three months at a job, three months at a job, three months at a job, like hiring someone is, is my time and effort. And I, I don't want to put time and effort for you to leave in three months and you have to do this all over again. Great point. I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads down here. Um, I have a follow-up question and this could be, everybody could have a different answer to this. Um, but I know that I've run across students and grads before who don't know what to wear or look like during an interview process within the firearms industry, particularly, you know, what's the expectation from an industry perspective? Um, Wyatt, I heard you say kind of look nice, right? Look the, look the part and everything. What do people expect out of, uh, you know, a person walking into a room for an interview from that? Yeah, for an interview, there's a difference between what you wear for an interview and what you wear to work, you know? So acceptable attire for work may be a t-shirt and shorts. Sure. Maybe, depending on what your position is. But for an interview, if it's something you actually care about, maybe wear a collared shirt, maybe comb your hair, maybe <laughs> wear some sort of dress pants. I've, I've had people come in anywhere from a polo, as far as good, good people, people that are mm -hmm. dressed good, anywhere from a polo up to, you know, people in full suits and ties. But as long as it looks like you took pride in what you're wearing and, and you prepared, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Anything to add I to that, mean, Shailene no. or Leo? Oh, sorry, Wyatt. Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. sorry. That doesn't mean it has to be expensive at all. You know, some people can't afford nice clothes, but if if your presentation looks like you put forth the effort for your presentation, then I'm going to consider that. Great. That's super helpful. Um, any other notes on that, Shailene or Lior? Uh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> dress, dress for the job, right? You're, you're not going to come into the interview in a tuxedo. Um, I, I'd venture to say a full-on suit is also a bit overdressed for the firearms industry. Business casual. Um, Button-down shirt, slacks, dress shoes, maybe a tie, uh, maybe a sports coat. But if you're if you're clean and, and presentable, that's all I care about. Shailene, how about you? I I think it depends on the it depends on what role you're interviewing for. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone's point is correct. I mean, look at how we're all dressed. Each of us are dressed differently on here but we all thought about what we were gonna wear before we got on here. Um, and so I think all of them are very appropriate. It just makes sense to make sure that you consider things as simple as your hair is freshly trimmed, your nails are nicely kept, you know, simple things. I mean, when we're working on jobs, no matter if it's, no matter what the level is, we always coach our interviewers our interviewees, both sides on what's appropriate because every company is different. So some firearms companies are very casual and some manufacturers are much more conservative um, and r expect different things, but it depends on the role that you're interviewing for. You can't go wrong dressing a little bit nicer and making sure that you have a fresh haircut. You just can't go wrong. I have like the most gunsmith question of the evening. What about beards? Hat popped up in the Q&A section over here. Listen, I got no problem with beards. However, however, let me say something about beards. Mm -hmm. You're applying for a position where your beard becomes a hazard. 
if you're going to be working with a lathe and you're going to wrap your beard around that lathe at, you know, 2200 RPMs and it rips your face off, that's an issue. But if you can keep yourself trimmed up, neat, or if you're in a position where it's not an issue, as long as it's neat and professional, that's okay. However, you, you want to, like everybody else sit here, have some good hygiene. That doesn't cost anything. Right. Uh, and you can do the super clips or Walmart even and just get a quick trim. Makes an impression. That tells us you care about your looks and you care about what you're trying to, you're trying to get this job. Yeah. You're not coming in with a holy teacher, holy jeans, sucking on your vape pipe and coming in and saying, I want this job. Ain't going to happen. Not in my shots. But I think here that even if you're budget challenged, and we've all been there in the past, I know I have in the past, Walmart doesn't cost a lot of money, so if you if you could just have a nice set of dress jeans, a nice shirt that's just appropriate, that's fine. You don't have to go overboard. That's going to get us past that point and tell me you're trying to get the job from me, and now we're going to concentrate on other things that we need to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, Kip, I'm going to keep it with you for this next question. Does having brand-specific certifications help when it comes to applying for jobs? And then, Wyatt, I'll probably hit you with this as well. well um, so as an example, um, Aaron has worked towards Glock Armor, CERTs, that kind of thing. So platform-based or manu manufacturer-based, smaller certificates, does that kind of thing help in the job search? Not a deal breaker when you're coming into a shop on an entry level. Like sure. In or be here. You're an experienced gunsmith. I might ask you what continuing education or have any education have you had? Mm -hmm. One thing I have found in this industry, and I imagine White can touch on this too, and probably even Shailene, a lot of gunsmiths will tell a lot of students, don't go to that school, it's a waste of time. And they're not just about online schools, they're talking about, you know, uh, brick and mortar schools, everything, because they never did anything. They don't want you to get better than them because you're competition. You're a threat. So they'll never tell you that, but they want to keep you on that level. So keep that in mind. I, you know, this subject is, is one of those subjects that the individual really just has to make their decision of what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Why, what do you think about that? I think, um, so, so me, for an example, I've seen people asking questions in here, of like, what's the next step after SBI? Yeah. And, questions like that um you know when i was at sdi i was living back in illinois i googled gun shops around me i googled any firearms job around me and mm -hmm. i went to those places and tried finding a job there you know I, I was a sales associate at a gun shop i was an rso at a gun shop i got nra certificates and then when i moved over to kansas city i went i did the exact same thing i googled all the different places went to those places i walked into shops and talked people into letting me have internships there i've you know I did a couple small internships before I ever got a job at CZ, but when I got to CZ, you look at my resume and it was guns and military. You know, I didn't put anything else on that resume that didn't relate to the job that I was looking for. You're not compelled to put things on your resume that don't apply to the job you're applying for. So when my boss was looking through, you know, hundreds of resumes and he comes across my resume and it all it says is guns, it's not going to hinder me. It's only going to show that I have a passion for it and he would at, at the very least want to call me in for an interview to see if I'm a prospect or not. And I do the sure. same thing when I'm, when I'm sorting through resumes. Yeah, absolutely. And the other point is as far as the certificates that go, well, if he's talking about Glock, you can see there's a few back here. <laughs> right. Every, everybody in the gun shop, the reason I point that out is, is everybody that was in my shop got one of those the same day I did. So to answer his question about certificate, you don't have to have those things, but more than likely, if you're in a legitimate shop that cares about their customers and their future, they're going to send you to an armor school. You're going to have to go through them anyway, because unless you have your own FFL, they won't even talk to you in a store because yeah. they want potential dealers and things like that. So, you know, if I was to, if CZ offer us, it's offered a armors program, I'd probably go take it just to have, just to take it because it's, I might learn something I don't know. Hey, just sure. 40 years old, I mean, I'll learn new things. That's how you learn, folks. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're more likely your employer will pay for that or reimburse you for it. Sure. Okay, cool. And that I think really aligned nicely with Shane had asked a question about when you have a, pers a prospective hire who has a good personality, like, is it an expectation for that person to go and continue their education to become more competitive? But it, it sounds like, um, 
in many cases, an employer will do that to kind of right move move their business forward for their own consumers. Um, yeah, Leor, I see. Know. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You know this from a human resources. Sure. Training. We cannot force people to go out and do things like that. Yeah. Because we just can't do it. If we want it done, it's just easier, cheaper, and it benefits you in the long run with your taxes anyway, whether you're a smaller shop or a big business. So, right. you know, more than likely it's, it's going to be the employer who does that, or I have offered reimbursement. Okay, cool. Very but nice. I can't force anybody to do that. That's at least that's what my attorneys told me when I got in the business. <laughs> I'll always listen to the attorneys. That's a good tip, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Well. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> um, let me do this. I know we're kind of winding down here at last couple minutes, although this has flown by you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, give me a couple questions that you typically go to during like an interview when you're interviewing someone. Um, what are some of those good questions that you use to figure out whether or not you, you want to hire that person? Lior, I'm going to go to you first. You're making such a good face. I'm going to you first. <laughs> This, this is, this might sound silly, but I've had a number of people walk out after I've asked them this. Okay. I'm a yes. little nervous, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, are you comfortable around firearms? Uh, oh, that's, that's so interesting. Yeah. It, it's just, that's, that's my first question because I don't know who this is outside of a piece of paper. That's the resume. Right. And, and sometimes I'm looking for somebody who isn't necessarily all in the gun industry. I'm not looking for a gunsmith. I'm looking mm -hmm. for someone who does my shipping and receiving. I'm looking for someone who does a QC that I don't want them necessarily in the knowledge of firearms because they could overlook things. They could think that they know everything. So I want someone with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. And that also breaks into how do you get into the industry? Sometimes I am looking for someone that's not in the industry. Uh, so the question is usually off the bat, are you, are you comfortable with being around guns all day? And I've had a number of people say no and walk out. Oh my gosh. Did they not know what they were applying for? Is that? And, and you know that, <laughs> that is, that is one of the questions that I want to know if they know what they're applying for. Yeah. Um, people just go and apply for everything. Yeah. So that's super that interesting. A, a nice question to ask to see if they know what they even applied for. Yep. How about Wyatt? Uh, what's your process like? Any go-to questions that help lead, lead people out? Uh, I have a favorite question. Um, I don't want to okay. specifically say what that question is, <laughs> but it's more of a, I ask them, do they have good problem solving skills earlier on in the interview? And then later on in the interview, I have a, a few different questions, but it, it may be one or the other that I pick and it, the question itself is complicated. Okay. So I want to see their problem solving skills to even, I watch, I have, I don't even care how they answer that question, honestly, at all. But I sit and I watch them, their faces and their brains work through the actual question itself before they can even get to the point where they come up with an answer. And if, if they've told me they've got good problem solving skills, well, they should come up with a good answer. If they don't have good problem solving skills, which I've had many people do, they sit there in silence and I'll sit there in silence and finally they'll just go, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Okay, so you kind of Google them. That was always that's, that no one should, Yeah, it's not that it's a question that's so hard you shouldn't be able to answer. It's just right. a question that's worded so that you have to think about the question and solve how to answer the question more yeah. than it is about what the answer is. Super interesting. I've always I've heard of some of those high profile like Fortune 10 companies doing stuff like that just to put you on the spot and see you work through that that problem solving bit. So that's super interesting. It, it's and then mostly walk out of there sweating. You know? Yeah, well, I, I've definitely had some of that, but it, yeah. you know, it, I do that right before the practical too. So if, if it didn't go well, it's probably going to frustrate you before Ooh. you can get you to practice. Oh but you know, it's worse. Or if you know, I I I understand if that employee, if I hired them, if there was some sort of situation that came up, if if they're going to need me holding their hand, or if they could use the tools that I provided them to figure out how to solve whatever it is. Yeah. Um, let me spend just a little bit of time in the last couple minutes here on a question that I'm seeing like different phrasing of um, throughout the evening. A lot of this, the people that enroll at SDI will be looking for their very first job in the firearms industry when they leave. Um, so if we could spend just a minute on entry level positions and raise a show of hands, um, who here would be hiring or would be looking for specifically entry level type people or have looked for that type of thing before, okay. Um, so I'll leave it to Wyatt and Lior and Kip. If you have color for that, you certainly can, can chime in here. Um, 
I think one of the concerns of a lot of our students and grads are, oh my gosh, okay, so I, ha I have this education, I want to get in the firearms industry, I don't know how to get in the firearms in industry, which I think we've, we've covered quite a bit tonight, but what happens if I don't have like, do I need a whole bunch of machinist um, experience, or is there some way to, to break through based on education and desire to be in the industry, that kind of thing? Can we talk through some of those concepts? Um, specifically for entry level types of positions. And and maybe just and I don't know this for sure, but there may be some cross references for entry level positions in many industries. You know what I mean? I feel like that that could be one of those universal truth type of scenarios as well. Um Lior, you want to take that one first? Yeah. Uh, I mean I'm I, I'm always looking to expand and grow. Um right now my biggest issue is that I, I can't produce fast enough. Yeah. So I am, I am looking for new hires. Um, so one of the things that I'm currently looking at is someone with some machinist experience, and that will always get someone to the top of the pile. Sure. Uh, for, now, if someone doesn't have it, it's not a deal breaker. Because you went through SDI, that shows that you are serious, and I will take a look at that over someone who just handed me their resume. Mm -hmm. um, military experience is always a plus. Um, but again, not a deal breaker if, if it's not on there. Um, I, I just, I want someone who, like Kip said, who comes to me and doesn't say I know everything, but comes to me and says, I want to learn everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that's really what it's about. Now, as for the skills, um, like I said, machinists will always get you, uh, uh me to at least look at it. Yep. Um, and having some sort of gunsmithing school will always get me to look at at the resume as well, even if yep. you don't have this experience. Okay, great. Um, Wyatt, anything to add to that? Uh, I would say that answer could be in, in the industry. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be in the mm -hmm. gunsmithing or firearms industry at all. Um, I've had people that you know didn't qualify on a resume and they continued to apply and I, you know, I recognize that name. I went back and looked, have, have I had this person's resume before? Oh, I have had this person's resume before. So, you know, I just called them in because they they persevered and kept kept applying. I've had people that's contacted, you know, other employees or even showed up at the door, which we, you know, have no soliciting, but if you still no soliciting, you show up at the door and say, Hey, can I hand you my resume? I'm probably gonna, you know, at least call you in because I feel like you know, you went forth and done that much work. I'm gonna I'm gonna at least call you in to see uh, mm -hmm. if it's worth it or not. Because in an entry level position, you don't really have to have all those hard skills. Because in an entry level position, I'm I'm equipped as the employer to train you on whatever it is that you need to be trained on, and for you to you know, further those skills that you may or may not already have. Mm -hmm. so it's it's like everything any other job. You know, go out and get it. Like like I said earlier, when I was attending SDI, I googled all the places around me. I went to their doors, knocked on them, said, "Hey, you got a position open." And, you know, more than once I created a position for myself that didn't even exist. They weren't even looking to hire and I didn't get some to hire. Awesome. We love those stories. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's all really, really good stuff. So I'm just for those of you that are attendees, I think our overarching concepts tonight have been the important things are things like initiative taking and tenacity and, you know, ethics, honesty. Those are those are things that that will get you far in this industry and probably all industries. Um, so I think that's really, that, that should give a lot of people a lot of hope, you know, I hate to be cheesy and warm fuzzy, but Hey, that's who I am. So, um, I think that's all really you encouraging. Don't, you don't take it too far and get cocky. I know that. You gotta and be that's humble. Too. Great point too. Um, I, yeah, definitely love that. So I, I want to be respectful of everyone's time on the line tonight. So, um, why don't we spend just the last minute or so here? Could I ask everybody who's interested, um, go around and offer any contact information that you feel comfortable sharing. Um, that could be anything from social media accounts for your company to how they can reach you to anything. I'm going to leave that completely to your jurisdiction. Um, Kip, I'll start with you on that one. The advice I'd like to leave you all tonight is just remember Anybody can lead you. I hate to use that old expression. You can take a horse to water, but you can't sure. make it. Be the horse that drinks. Drink mm -hmm. the water and drink it all. And then go find another hole and drink it too. 
and just keep going until you can't hold no more water. And when you can't hold no more water, spew it out and go get some more. <laughs> because the more you learn, the more you're going to set yourself aside this field, whether you stay with the shop or whether you go on to do your own thing. Everything you can get under your belt is going to help you. Um, another thing that I, I push the students, and again, is just be professional. Be proud of who you are. Carry yourself as so. Show that you believe in what you're doing. You will be shocked at how far that will take you in life. And that's, that's I don't want to take your rest of the time, but just those two basic things. You can just do those things. It will come to you, I promise you. Hard work and dedication still pays off in this country. No matter what we still hear, you can get somewhere. This is America. Take advantage. Absolutely. Those are great tips. Um, and if any students or grads are on the line and they want to reach out to you or instructors, do you want them to go to your to the general instructor email or directly to you? How, how do you want them to tackle that? Real simple. Everybody's got something right on. Kip dot carpenter at sdi dot edu. Awesome. That's my direct email. You can get hold of me if you want to talk to anybody else. Want to talk to Jennifer? I'll hook you up. Not a problem. Yep. Perfect. And same thing. Um, anybody SDI related, feel free to reach out to marketing at SDI and I'll triage you as well. So good, good. Yep. Place. We're there for you. And Jennifer will tell you that if you're hung up, you're not sure about the school. Uh, she's called me a few times and had me call a few students for us. That's so. for sure. That, yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. And I appreciate that, Kip. Thank you. No um, okay, Elaine, uh, students and graduates, how can they get a hold of you? So they can get a hold of me um, through career services at sdi.edu. Um, and maybe a little bit of advice that I want to give you guys is something that I've seen from the past 14 years of me being in this um, career services industry mm -hmm. is that how you work in school is how you're going to work out in the real world. So I want to leave you with the triple A's. Number one is attendance. Attendance is actually really, really important. Um, like I said, if you're going to do that in school, you're going to do that out in the real world. Um, second thing is also your attitude. I think we've all kind of touched base on that today, too, is that if you can't work with somebody or you're coming in with a bad um, bad attitude all the time, you're going to affect other people. Um, and then the last thing is also um, your, your attire, right? You, you need to make sure that you are betting your, putting your first, your best foot forward um, and doing that every single time and, and practicing that so that you always have that when you're done. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elaine. Um, Leor, how would you like them to interact with you and your company? Or any uh, final thoughts? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I, I guess the final thoughts is is something that um, what I have at a bare minimum, which I've, I've fired people in the past for this, is show up on time. Um, five, ten minutes late, I'm easy. I get it. Life happens. Um, but if, if you show up on time, that's half the battle. That's half the work. And and that will will keep you in my good graces for at least half the time. And um, as for uh, reaching out to me, uh, Elaine has all my info. Uh, she she's taken in all your resumes for me. I am mm -hmm. currently hiring. So just give her your resume. Um, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm currently in Vegas. Uh, I see some questions also um, coming in. Unfortunately, we're not expanding out just yet. Uh, we <laughs> like everything close to home for now. Uh, we do have sales reps all over the country so if, if sales is your game then by all means give elaine that that resume and she'll pass yep. it on to me and, and i'll look at everything awesome awesome very cool it looks like you got a couple new fans uh, after today. <laughs> <laughs> um okay great and shailene uh any last tips final thoughts or ways that um the attendees can get a hold of you Sure. Uh, anyone is welcome to reach out to us on our main email, and I'm going to give you that instead of mine because that way I can get some help fielding those, but they, they will all get to me. So you can reach us um, through our website at headhuntersnw.com, or you can email us at headhuntersnw at headhuntersnw.com. So in all of that information is on our website. We're glad to be a resource. You're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn. We have a, a you can find Headhunters Northwest, um, Headhunters NW, it's probably easier to, to go find. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you name it, Twitter, 
I mean, we, we seem to be a little bit of everywhere, but uh, you can reach us. We do post jobs on those sites. So when we're looking for things, but we don't post all of our searches. So sure. if you're ever at SHOP Show, um, look me up or NRA or NASGW or anything like that. Do reach out. We'd be glad to meet and talk and have coffee. And if we can be a resource, that's, that is the only reason we exist is to serve the outdoor industry and specifically firearms. So let us know and we'll help you if we can. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Wyatt, um, any final thoughts from you or ways to get in contact with you? Anything you're comfortable with? Uh, I think we, I think we covered a lot of good points. So I don't mm -hmm. really have a lot of final thoughts. Sure. Uh, you can get a hold of me. I don't really have a good way to get a hold of me. I'm always, always busy. I, I would say I would give totally you a link. Totally get that. Something you can email me on, but I don't want to not answer that. Yeah. But what about were, um, company? Apply at CZ USA. Yeah. If you were to apply at CZ USA and you put, put in there that, you know, you saw me on this and uh, when when the hiring officials are going through and you've got a comment that has my name in it, uh, it'll get you pushed to the top of the list. And I know not uh, immediately, but probably in about two years, we're going to make a large expansion down in Little Rock. So there'll be plenty of positions open in there. Very, very cool. That's that's <laughs> what I'd like to hear and some networking there. <laughs> really a good time to go to school. That's exactly right. <laughs> I, I'm typically at the shows, but I usually don't work them. So sometimes every once in a while, someone will pop in at the booth at CZ and say they're looking for me and someone will text me and I'll come find them. Very cool. Um, and for anybody that needs information on SBI, um, marketing at sbi.edu, or if you have any ideas for me for future webinars, that's a great place to put those as well. Um, students and grads, as you've heard me say before, I love to hear about what you guys are doing, so keep me in the loop, marketing at sbi.edu. Any of our social media channels, tag us, let us know, I'll share all your fun stories and um, all your little highlights from your from all of the businesses that you're opening, all that good stuff. So. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Attendees, thank you for being here tonight. And panelists, we really, really appreciate all of your insights. Um, it's been a great panel and a great webinar tonight. Again, we will we have recorded all of this. Um, we'll post it to the, the SDI social media channels, and then we're going to share it out with um, all of our panelists tonight so that their friends, family, audiences, et cetera, have access to it as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have any additional questions, students, grads, feel free to hit up Elaine on any of those outstanding Q&A type questions. Um, we will get you, point you in the right direction, get you any resources you need. Um, and everybody have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Uh, have Bye, a great night. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, see you later.